Welcome to Live Spirit Chat. I am Miss Melinda, owner and operator of Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services. Live Spirit Chat happens every Saturday, almost every Saturday, at 12 noon United States Central Standard Time. This is your chance to participate in a free group teaching session and get your questions answered about developing your spiritual practice, your spiritual connection, and so forth. We also talk about all kinds of related topics like developing your psychic abilities, working with your spirit guides, doing dream work, working with guardian angels, folk magic, candle magic, tarot, and divination. So for live spirit chat, I do accept early bird submissions. So I allow questions to be submitted early via Instagram. And those are the questions that are addressed at the top of the hour. After that, I'll be taking live questions here in our private chat session. So I do have some upcoming service announcements. And the biggest thing is that I am nearing my summer sabbatical. Summer sabbatical will begin August 1st. That means that I'll be taking a break from individualized spell services at that time. Almost everything else is going to be available and I'm going to be shifting gears a little bit during that time and focusing more on teaching and workshops and one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentorship. So I do have a handful of individual spell services available until that August 1st date. All right, let's jump into the early bird questions. Let me take a look here at my telephone device and see what questions have been submitted. You can feel free to go ahead and put place your live questions in the chat box and I will get to them at the appropriate time or you can wait until that time. So the first question is, what is the best way to request signs slash answers from the universe? So my favorite way to request signs or messages or guidance <clears throat> from the universe is really simple. I like to pray. I pray to the divine universe. So for these kinds of signs, I think that it's important to specify who you're talking to, um, just like with all kinds of spiritual work or all kinds of magic, our intention is really important and it's really useful to state our intentions out loud, right? So when you sit down to pray, make it clear that you are addressing the divine universe. Um, sometimes I call her divine mother. Sometimes I'm just addressing pure universal source or source energy, the source of all. The goal here is that we're really looking at the primary creator force of the world, of the universe. So make that clear from the beginning. And then just specifically state that you need signs about a specific topic. And then the most important thing is to look and listen for those signs. You have to give yourself space and give yourself quietude in order to receive those signs and messages. I think that that is where many people um, might get hung up, right? You have to make sure that you have the really just the space in your life to receive the signs and that you don't second guess them. That if something comes up, you don't talk yourself out of it. Always try to follow your first instinct. If you notice something and you the first thought that pops into your head or the first feeling that pops into your body is that that was a sign or a message for you, try to stick with that, go with it. Notice if you try to talk yourself out of it. Notice if doubt creeps in or over analysis creeps in or fear or anxiety creeps in and keep taking yourself back to that first thought or that first feeling. I also find it really helpful when asking for signs from the divine universe in this way to actually ask divine mother source energy to show me. So for example, um, and I'll do this with pretty much anything in my life. So if I'm stuck on a decision that I need to make or stuck at a crossroads and I'm not sure which way to turn, um, if I just wanna make sure that 
the choices that I'm making or the actions that I'm taking are in alignment with my overall intentions or in alignment with my spiritual development or in alignment with the needs of my clients or the highest good or highest purpose, right? Then that is a scenario where I may ask for help or I almost always ask for help with those kinds of decisions. And the way that I do it is by actually asking the divine universe to show me. And what I mean by that is to act through me, to show me, to show me with my eyes, to lead me with my hands, to lead me with my heart, to lead me with my mind. So actually to, this is a form of, of channeling, right? I'm inviting the divine universe to come through me and to show me what to do, to lead me in the right direction, to show me the steps to take or the actions to take. And then, as I said, it's a really important then that you make sure you're setting the intention and creating the space to be open to what you are shown and kind of expect the unexpected because it means that you need to be flexible, you need to be adaptable, you need to be willing to go with those signs or willing to go with some new ideas or some flashes of inspiration that perhaps you weren't expecting. So that's my favorite way and a little bit of background information about asking for signs from the universe. Now, okay, next question is, she's writing a, a letter so we could also consider that she's writing a petition or she's writing a written spell. She's writing a letter to release blockages. And she wants to know what kinds of condition oils to use. So what kinds of spiritual oils to use. And she chose a Hindu oil that is dedicated to Ganesha slash opening roads. So yeah, that's awesome. She made an excellent choice for um, releasing blockages. You could also just use blockbuster oil. You could also make your own blockbuster oil. Um, I make a really simple blockbuster oil and the base that I use is a mixture of almond and olive oil. You could also use something a little bit lighter like apricot oil or grapeseed oil. And I use coffee grounds and cinnamon. And that's, you, you can put more ingredients in and I typically do, but I wanna give you a really easy recipe that you can make out of things that you might already have available to you in your kitchen. Um, and all you need to do is you cover those ingredients with the oil, let it sit for two weeks, strain it out, put more ingredients in that oil, let it sit for another two weeks, do that two or three times. Coffee is an excellent ingredient for opening roads or for breaking blockages as is cinnamon. Cinnamon gives some of that fiery intensity that allows us a nice burst of energy to break through the blockages that we're seeking to break through. Some other ingredients that you may want to add to that, if you wanna be really traditional and add some extra power, then you might want to add some plant matter from the plant Abre Camino, right? The road opener plant. I would use the bark and the leaves. Another thing that you could use would be frankincense. There's just, you could use fresh peppermint, fresh, fresh spearmint. Peppermint and spearmint are excellent for releasing blockages and opening roads as well but she made an excellent choice for that oil. And let's see what are the other questions we have. Her next question is also about condition oils or conjure oils. When using release and restore oil, do I apply going up or going down? Right, so I think the reason that she's asking about this is because typically if we wanna get rid of something, you don't usually apply oils to your body when you wanna get rid of something, but there could be some instances where you may. So if you wanna get rid of something, you would apply the oil, if, it, if you were applying it on your arm, you would apply it away from you. You're getting rid of that. You're sending that away. You're sending that out of your life, right? And when you want to call blessings into your life, you're going to apply an oil towards you or, or towards the object that you're working with or 
towards your home, let's say towards your doorstep or towards your front door. Um, so I believe that the reason she's asking about this is because it's a release and restore oil, right? So it's got two different intentions. For releasing and restoring, I would definitely apply it away from my body to really emphasize that releasing, releasing um, aspect of the oil. And in my mind, like the, the restoration is coming because of the release, right? The release is the root thing there. So I would focus more on releasing in terms of how to apply that oil. So applying it away from your, from your body would be the way I would, I would tackle that. What are some items for a self-love grigri? Okay, cool. So for a self-love, I would use the same ingredients that you use for other kinds of love. And I would emphasize that you want to, just like with all magic, you want to really hone in on the particular aspects of love that you need in your life. For instance, perhaps the reason that you are having um, difficulty with self-love is because there are, there's old pain or old blockages that need to be released or need to be healed, right? So in that case, you could use some lavender, not only for its loving vibrations, but also for its aspects of clarity, clarification, especially the clarity that it brings to your heart, the illumination that it brings to your heart. I would definitely use pink rose petals. Those are excellent for self-love as well as other kinds of love. Um, if you are having trouble loving yourself because of like sadness or past pain or past trauma, I keep bringing this up because it's most often the reason that people have trouble with self-love. And it's a very natural and normal thing to have trouble with love and self-love um, because of old pain or old trauma. And I would also add that whenever we're having trouble with love, love with other people, love from outside of ourselves, then there is usually a core issue of self-love as well. So all of these things are, are related and overlapping. So if you find that you need some healing in those areas, then you might wanna use something specifically for releasing the pain or emotional energy or emotional blockages related to the past. So that could be like black walnut oil or black walnut hull, not oil. H-U-L-L, hull. Um, so it's the ground up shells of black walnut. Some other things that may assist you with self-love, I would focus on some uplifting, clarifying uh, energies such as lemon, lemon zest, um, lemon grass, um, lemon balm, those kinds of healing, soothing, uplifting sort of energies that are going to help you with uplifting your heart, uplifting your vibrations, and uplifting your mood. Um, what are some other things? I just, it seems like I had like five things in my mind and I couldn't get everything out fast enough, which is often the case. But those are some excellent places to start with um, items and herbs for self-love in a grigri bag. Now in a grigri, you wanna use more than just botanicals, right? You want your ingredients to represent the different elements. So you wanna have something that represents earth. You wanna have some kind of a rock or a crystal. Certainly I would recommend rose quartz. Um, amethyst would also be great. Um, if you want to add some kind of metal, which I would recommend, then you could use a, a Queen Elizabeth coin. Um, some, a coin with a strong female that represents um, self-sovereignty, self-confidence, these kinds of energies, especially if you feel that there are self-confidence issues that are tied in with your self-love, right? So really focusing on the subtleties 
of what's going on underneath the surface of your self-love concern and making sure that you use ingredients that work with those nuances that are going to work together as a cohesive whole, creating a spirit that is hand tailored to you. Some other things that are really lovely for self-love, especially for females, would be Elizabeth root, Beth root. Um, that's also good for other types of love, of course, and master root. Master root is excellent for um, the feminine qualities of self-love, self-acceptance, as well as for healing. So you could do a, you know, that could be a multi-layered purpose there. Um, assisting you with healing anything that needs to be healed in order to usher in that self-love and then also assisting you with the self-love with the, the um, confidence as well as mastering the overall concept and the overall energies of self-love. So that was actually all of the early bird questions. So if anybody else, I'm just double checking. Yes, that was all of the early bird submissions. So if anybody else has any questions to submit now, this would be a great time to do it. And then we also had on the table a little discussion about dream work that we were going to dive into. So I have been thinking a lot about dream work. Um, it's always been something that I have been really called to in a very natural way. Let me rephrase that. It's been something that I have done like unconsciously without, for a long time I did it unintentionally um, without having any intention behind it and without even always necessarily knowing what was happening. And because I had that natural propensity towards it, um, at some point I decided to go with that and to work with dreams in a more conscious way. And at first I felt like that was going to offer me some agency over the situation because what I was finding is that I was doing work for other people. I'm doing work for myself and for other people when I'm asleep. So I'm waking up exhausted um, and people would come to me over and over again and tell me that I'm traveling to them in their dreams. I'm doing things like doing readings for them, so on and so forth. It, you know, people told me that like a handful of times, two or three times before I was like, okay, there's a pattern. There's something to this. People keep saying this over and over again. And I am, I have always had these really intense experiences in my dreams and in my sleep. So it took other people telling me about it a few times before I really seriously recognized that there was not only something going on for me, but something, you know, more than what I was experiencing that was also going on. So for a long time, I felt like doing intentional work around my dreams and around my sleep patterns was a way to create some agency for myself and to be more conscious about what was going on there. Um, but now I feel like my dreams are just too active. My sleep life is too active. And I'm once again having a lot of disturbed sleep I'm once again having a lot of activity in my sleep and I'm waking up exhausted. So this is a little PSA about how to, um, about being cautious about what you, how ambitious you are about your dream work. Because even though you are asleep, it doesn't mean that you are going to be resting if your mind is super active. And even if it's just your subconscious mind that is super active, you can still end up being really depleted, uh, really exhausted from everything that is going on. And what has been going on lately are a couple of different things. So one thing is that there are spirits that are trying to talk to me when I'm asleep. So I'm setting up some stronger boundaries around that. And so we're gonna go off on a couple of tangents here. So first thing, if you have a natural propensity towards mediumship, 
you want to make sure that you set up what I refer to as office hours to speak with your spirits and what the, or the spirits that want to speak with you, not necessarily your spirits. Um, and what that does is it allows a specified time where they can come and speak to you and it allows you the practice of opening yourself up and then closing yourself off. So it allows yourself the practice of opening up and setting and creating boundaries for yourself, setting up protection for yourself, and it allows you the practice of delving into your skills when you want to and then retracting from your skills or retracting from your connection when you need to. It also communicates to the spirits that you have a set time when you are going to speak to them. It allows them to be heard um, because sometimes spirits just want someone to hear their story. So it allows them to be heard so that they're not bothering you at other times. So if you're somebody who has a, a natural talent towards mediumship and you're having these kinds of experiences where spirits are trying to get through to you, the first thing to do is set up office hours where you will open yourself up or not even like in the beginning, you don't even have to think about that so much as being receptive, allowing yourself to be receptive to the messages at that time, right? So that's the first thing to do. So that I had to take a step back and say, okay, these spirits are trying to get through to me during my sleep. What, what have I been doing? What have I not been doing? I haven't been holding my office hours, right? So that's, that's one thing that I can do to protect my sleep from that aspect of things. Um, there's a spirit that follows me around who is my great grandmother and she is very sad and she basically just wants to be heard. She wants to tell her story and I haven't been listening to her the way that she would like me to. And part of it is because she doesn't, um, she doesn't communicate loudly through clear audience. So I don't necessarily always hear her speaking, but she communicates loudly through energy, through emotions. So she actually has the ability, because I'm sensitive to the energy, to make me feel sad to make me feel um, kind of drugged down. So I had to recognize that this is happening. I actually obtained a, a reading from someone else who helped me sort some of this out. And um, so that's a great example. My great grandma is a great example of a spirit who just needs to be heard, wants to be heard, and a medium who hasn't been holding her office hours to listen to the spirits, to receive their messages, to do my spiritual job, which is to act as a medium, as a, an interceptor, or um, as an intermediary between the two worlds, right? So there's that. And then the other thing that's been happening in my sleep life is for a long time, I focus on, you know, please send me the messages and guidance that I most need at this time. So I would set an intention for my dreams or set an intention for my sleep activity. Because like I said, I've always known that it's a highly spiritual time for me. When I receive a lot of messages or I speak to ancestors, um, travel to other places, so on and so forth. So for the longest time, I would set an intention before going to sleep concerning a decision that I was trying to make or um, a challenge that I was facing or basically just whatever was on my mind at the time and <clears throat> then allowing myself to be open to receiving the guidance and messages that I most needed while sleeping. Well, what has happened as a result of that is that I am working overtime, you know, in the spirit world as well as in my subconscious mind, solving these problems, overcoming these challenges, making these decisions. So I recommend that you stay very conscious and aware of how this kind of dream work is affecting your sleep patterns and affecting um, the activity in your mind and affecting the rest that you're able to get. 
And what I specifically recommend is that if you're at a time of high stress or high activity, if there is a lot of other stuff going on in your life, then it's not going to be the right time to sort things out or receive guidance or messages in your sleep. Um, Instead, during times like that, it's going to be more beneficial for you to set up some protection, to ask your guides or even your subconscious mind or your guardian angel, whoever it may be, to assist you with a protected sleep, to assist you with an insulated sleep, to assist you with, um, I, I call it purification, like a a purified sleep, a sleep that is surrounded by blessings, a sleep that is insulated. So that's what I've had to shift my focus to in recent times. And when I say recent, I mean very recent, like the last few days. Um, <clears throat> and there are some things that I have picked up that have kind of helped me with this and that have helped me to protect my sleep time. Um, you know, and one of the reasons that this, this system of receiving messages and guidance during my sleep intentionally wasn't working for me anymore is because I have more stress right now. I have more anxiety right now. The world is a crazy place right now. Things are crazy in Texas. There's like, there's a lot of, on my mind every day. There's um, a lot on my clients' minds every day. And uh, my mind is already busy. So my mind is already like a bit overactive, right? It's already a bit too busy. So that's the biggest thing to be aware of. Like, how are you feeling in your life? And what do you really need from your sleep right now? You know, I would say if you're in a time of relatively low stress or relatively low anxiety, and you've been getting really good sleep, and you know that you have extra time to sleep in, like it's best to do your sleep work or your dream work when you can really allow yourself like nine, 10 hours or more of sleep. I know it sounds crazy, but it's not, um, it's not frivolous because there is so much that you can work out and there is so much that you can receive. Um, I just had a phenomenal healing dream the other day where I received some really significant healing during my sleep. So it's things like this that can happen when you allow yourself that extra space and you really look at your sleep as sacred. Now, just to backtrack a little bit to the, to, um, sort of the beginning of this, there are some things that I have needed to set up in order to protect my sleep right now. Um, one of them is that I'm using a healing liquid, a healing water um, that is traditional to spiritualists, but I've got my own twist on it. So it's a bluing water, right? So that's made with either um, bluing agent or with Mexican anil. And then I'm adding camphor to it for that extra um, kind of extra kick of protection and purification. Um, blue water is something that spiritualists would traditionally place around their house to offer clear connection to benevolent spirits. So it has the added benefit of being an energetic conductor, meaning that it assists you with strengthening your connection to the spirits you want to connect with, as well as being a protecting agent. So it assists you with connecting to only those types of spirits you want to connect with. And sometimes they would sleep with it by their bed as well for the same purposes that I am. So I've added camphor to that. Camphor is a traditional ingredient, ingredient for protection and purification. It's known as being a very strong purification agent. So I wanted an extra kick. So I'm actually sleeping with an open cup of the bluing camphor healing water next to my bed, as well as a fresh bouquet of holy basil in a vase. So basil is another one of these traditional plants that is used in spiritualism as well as in many, many traditions, um, many of the traditions from the African diaspora, as well as others, um, really wonderful for purification and protection. But 
more than that, it's subtle energies are, are more about like uplifting. And when we think about uplifting, it's literally like it sounds, right? So lifting energy up off of you, releasing weight, raising vibrations, um, uplifting your mood, uplifting your mental clarity, uplifting your heart. So it's uplifting, purification, um, protection, so on and so forth. It's um, I make a traditional healing water out of basil that I use to, it has other ingredients that are secret, but the main ingredient is basil that I use um, in mediumship and in my spiritualist practices to protect and purify. Just to give you some background about the versatility of basil in this work. But right now I'm growing a bunch of holy basil in my garden. So that's what's available to me. And it has, you know, it has the same qualities. It's just um, slightly different. So I've got a, a vase of fresh holy basil next to my bed, along with the healing water. And those things are there to assist me with a protected and insulated and purified sleep and long story short, <laughs> I would just encourage all of you who have a natural propensity towards dream work to be conscious about what's going on there and how you feel when you wake up and to, to switch up your routine when you need to, to be conscious about when your dream routine may need to change or when your sleep routine may need to change or like what's right for you now versus what was right for you before right so i hope that that's helpful i know it's been a, a really um interesting topic for me to think about dream work has always been something that i continually want to delve deeper and deeper into and i still will but right now what i most need is a nice protected, insulated, purified sleep. And the changes that I've made have really been helping with that. So when I go to sleep, instead of asking for signs and messages, instead of asking for help with working things out or coming to decisions or receiving guidance, instead I'm asking for a peaceful, protected, restful sleep where I'm not called into any kind of action or any kind of duty, right? Okay, here we go. So live questions. I know the different ways of connecting with tarot cards, but I love the Robin Wood tarot. However, my hands are really tiny and I can't shuffle them as they are big. They keep falling off when I'm not asking questions and not a single card pops up when I ask a question. Sometimes half of the deck falls off my hand. <laughs> I got the Gilded Tarot and Hanson Roberts as they are smaller. However, I don't seem to connect with any other deck besides the Robin Wood Tarot. Is there some solution to this? Yeah, so the Ghetto Tarot that I use that I have um, such a strong connection with and have mainly been using for several years now, it's really huge cards. And that was really hard for me to get used to. And the shuffling was really strange in the beginning, but I did get used to it. So the first thing that I would say is that perhaps if you keep practicing, you will get used to it. The other thing is um, I did end up edging those cards. So I ended up cutting away the corners and the edges of those cards and making them a bit smaller. You could consider that as well. And if you Google that or you look online in tarot forums or tarot websites, there's all kinds of information out there about how to edge your cards. It's pretty simple and it can end up looking really attractive. A lot of people prefer their cards to be edged. So that's something you can consider just cutting off the edges like with an exacto knife and making them smaller for yourself. And I think if you consider some different ways of shuffling. So I'm very uh, non-conventional when it comes to the way that I manage my tarot readings. So I don't follow really specific guidelines for shuffling or really specific guidelines for placements, right? So I think you know what I'm talking about. A lot of people will recommend that you cut your deck into two piles or three piles 
and that you pick your cards up from specific places or that you have your cards in a specific order before you begin to shuffle and before you begin to pull your cards. Those aren't things that I adhere to. What I adhere to are the things that I have learned intuitively and through practice that work well for me. And what I recommend for you is that you figure out what works well for you with this deck. Because it sounds to me like the way that you're shuffling them doesn't work with the size of the deck. So I would encourage you to be open to figuring out other ways of shuffling them and really use your intuition. I mean, tarot reading is all about intuition anyway, right? Really use your intuition to hone into a different way of handling and shuffling the deck that could work specifically with you. And perhaps especially in using that deck, but I bet if you do this, you'll find a system that works for you that you can use with all kinds of decks and all kinds of cards. Um, you may want to consider something like spreading them out on a table and picking a card from random places that call to you intuitively. You may want to consider separating the deck into different piles and then picking cards from the different piles. So there are many different things that you could set up for yourself that could work instead of the way that you're shuffling now. I didn't get a chance to say goodbye when our other guests left, but that's okay. Does anybody else have any questions? And if you have a follow-up question to the tarot, let's delve into that. Otherwise, I'm happy to take any other live questions at this time. Feel free to submit them in the comments. If anybody has a question about the dream work that we were talking about, um, a question about tarot, a follow-up question to anything we already discussed, I would be happy to elaborate more. Any other follow-up questions about the condition oils that we were speaking about, um, anything else? What I'm doing is looking at those Instagram questions one more time. And to see, right, so we could do follow-up questions about self-love in a Grigri, follow-up questions about the best way to request signs or messages from the universe. You're welcome. I'm glad the information was helpful to you. All right, so if we don't have any more questions, I think this is a great time to bring today's spirit chat to an end. Wait, wait, here we go. I got a money oil and started losing money in little ways. Weird. That brought me back to the time I was destitute. Oh, so you started losing money in little ways and I think it triggered something for you. So I don't, this isn't gonna really, <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to, I don't mean to, I'm not laughing at you, but it is a little bit funny to imagine you breaking, throwing. So she said she, it reminded her of the time that she was destitute. So she got angry and she threw the oil and it broke. And now she's concerned that the, the breaking the oil could bring her bad luck. And she's been worried about it. These are really interesting things to bring up. I have a few things to say about this. So first of all, um, a lot of people in this kind of work in different kinds of folk magic believe that when something breaks, it means that there's bad luck or that it's a curse or something of that nature. It's completely the opposite from what I believe and what I have experienced. So what I have experienced is that when something breaks or something cracks during this type of folk magic, for instance, if a plate cracks, um, it indicates a breaking up of negative energies. It indicates a releasing of a blockage. So I would encourage you to think of this that way. When you broke that bottle of oil, you broke any kind of blockages that you have to money or abundance. You broke your ties with being destitute. You broke your ties with the past. You smashed that and you are done with that. You can think of that as a ritual. And if you want to go back and do like a retrace your steps, like go back in your memory 
and relive when you broke that oil and visualize it and make it into a ritual for yourself. Visualize breaking that oil and breaking up your blockages, breaking up your obstacles, breaking your tie to the past. Do that if it's gonna help you and I think it will help you. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple other things I wanted to say about this, but let me see. Yes, the losing money stopped, but every now and again, I worry, especially because I respect the seller. <laughs> um, I'm just thinking what I want to share because I bought an oil from somebody. I bought an oil from somebody that I respect and I received the oil and I felt that something was wrong with it. And it smelled strange. And I felt that the person had done something to the oil because they felt that they were in competition with me. And I threw that oil away. So I have had um, experiences like this as well, but I would encourage you not to, not to think too um, deeply, not to, not to focus too heavily upon the, the seller, not to, not to place too much emphasis on how you feel or do not feel about the seller. It's not about them you were having some kind of, a, kind of an experience in, in regard to your relationship with abundance and prosperity. You're having some kind of an experience in relation to your relationship with the spirit of money, the spirit of wealth. Um, that's what's going on there. I don't think it's about the oil, but I think because the oil carried the energy of abundance, the oil carried the energy of wealth, it brought it up in you. Um, it made it more apparent to you. It brought some things up coming from your subconscious mind. So let's see. Yeah, then the first thing that I was going to say, this brings me back to the first thing that I was going to say, which was it brought you, you started losing money in little ways and it brought you back to the time that you were destitute. So what that tells us is that there may still be something like you have, um, trauma or, you know, some kind of um, difficulties remaining still regarding your relationship to money, to, to the spirit of money or the spirit of prosperity or the spirit of wealth. You can look at those as three different things. Um, but the main thing I'm trying to encourage here is that you actually look at it as a spirit. So an entity or an energy in and of itself, and you work on your relationship with that spirit. The reason I'm recommending this is not only because money is an energy, money is an entity, money is a spirit, as is wealth, right? But also because when you can visualize it that way and you can honor it in that way, it allows you the capability of entering into communication with it, entering into a consensual relationship with that spirit where you have um, some agency and some responsibility. You have an active role in that relationship and you can help to heal that relationship, to mend that relationship, to cultivate that relationship, to strengthen that relationship, so on and so forth. So what I'm saying is I recommend that you do some work around that, around your relationship with that spirit of prosperity, that spirit of wealth or that spirit of money, um, and that you specifically do some healing surrounding the time that you were destitute just to paraphrase what you're saying. So if we wanted to put that in another way, we could say um, doing some work around scarcity, right? So scarcity is when we become afraid that it's like an underlying feeling or an underlying worldview that there's never enough, that there's never going to be enough. And scarcity does things like as soon as we see like one jar empty in the cupboard, we start to feel like, oh my God, I don't, I'm not going to have enough. Everything is running out. I'm never going to have enough, right? It's like that kind of, um, 
cyclical spinning out of control kind of feeling or kind of thought pattern and like so many of these other things that underline our fears or our anxieties or um, make up our world views they they can be happening in a very subtle way sort of underneath the surface of our daily thoughts and we may not notice it right so this is something to tune into um because it sounds to me like you started losing money in little ways and then you became really afraid that you were just going to keep losing money or that you were going to lose tons of money you know um, or that you were going to lose everything until you become destitute again. So it's really important to sort of like work through those fears, um, not only for your own mental health, your peace of mind and your own security and stability, but also so that you don't project those fears into the world and start acting in a way that is informed by fear rather than acting in a way that is informed by what you really want and what you really need and what's really uh, aligned with you, right? So um, that's, that's part of our shadow self. When we are acting based upon buried or um, fears that are unconscious, things we're not completely conscious of, that is a form of our shadow self. And what that means is that it is, it, it's controlling our actions to a certain extent and we're not aware of it. Um, we want the most agency, the most clarity that we can possibly have in our lives. So we wanna do this shadow work. We wanna uncover those areas where our fears, our anxieties or unhelpful patterns of thought or unhelpful patterns of belief or feelings are um, informing us and telling us what we should and should not do. That means that we're not really acting in our best interest. We're not really acting in our highest interest. We're not really free to do the things that feel the best for us or bring us the best results or satisfy us the most, bring us the most fulfillment or satisfy our needs. So we want as much agency as possible in obtaining the things in life or creating the life that's going to help us be the most fulfilled, right? The most joyful, the most, the most um, happy. <clears throat> She's saying they were dumb mistakes every day that added up to a lot. And I felt the same emotions as I did when that used to happen and when I didn't have enough. Yeah, I mean, I think we've all been there or most of us, right? Um, that also sounds like a mercury retrograde kind of thing like you just like when you say dumb mistakes it's just stuff that is confusing or overlooked or like like you think that you ordered one thing but you actually ordered something else or you know um it's like problems with technology problems with communication problems with the way that you are perceiving information um, th this is a very like mercury retrograde kind of situation where a bunch of little mistakes are adding up to you um, losing money and, and things of that nature yeah I she's saying it stopped immediately after the oil broke and I'm saying that's because you broke up an obstacle you broke up a blockage blockage you're setting yourself free. Speaking of like silly mistakes, I wanted to show you all this. Look at this giant spirit money. <laughs> Look at this giant spirit money. I thought that I was ordering normal spirit money and I got this giant spirit money in the mail. <laughs> What am I going to do with this? Let me know your ideas. If you have um, some need or some use for giant spirit money, what would you do with this? I can definitely use it for paper petitions, um, but I only need a paper petition that's like a quarter of the size. I don't need a paper petition that's this big. So I kind of hate to um, to tear it apart, you know, to separate it. A community money spell. Yeah, that's a great idea, but there are like 50 of these. I don't know if I'm gonna do 50 community money spells. <laughs> but I'll figure out something. I just wanted to let you know, I had planned on showing you all this anyway, 
because it's kind of cool too. Um, but also a great example of a silly mistake. I thought I was ordering normal size spirit money and this is the spirit money I got. I did not even know this giant spirit money existed. And this is really nice, really, really high quality spirit money. Like, I don't know if you can see that, but you can see the, you can feel and see the beautiful um, texture of it. The point of big Joss paper or big spirit money like this is so that you burn it as offerings to your ancestors or to your, like I call them high level spirit guides. Um, in the cultures where this money comes from, that's not the terminology that they use, but that's something that's personal to me. Um, yeah, so I can definitely burn this as offerings. This is a lot of offerings. It's a lot more offerings than I need right now. Of course, I could burn the whole thing as one giant offering to um, an ancestor spirit. That great grandma I was talking about earlier, she probably could use some, some offerings. I probably won't burn it all. A community money spell is a great idea. While I'm on my sabbatical from personal spell services, I'll have time to focus more on community services, hint, hint. So that is something that could come up in the future. If at a later date you have any ideas, questions, comments about giant spirit money, feel free to let me know. I happen to be in possession of a large amount of giant spirit money. So let's bring today's session to an end. I really appreciate all of you that were here today. I appreciate your presence, the energy that you bring. I appreciate your wonderful questions and your interesting conversation. I appreciate all of you. Don't forget, I am going on partial sabbatical. Um, it is very soon going to be your last chance to book your individualized spell services for the summer. I will be taking a break from those spell services in order to focus on other endeavors. I will still be available for live spirit chats and for our mystic membership via Patreon and for many other things for all of our readings and so forth. So thanks so much for being here, everyone. Stay blessed, be well, much love.